Winter is here. Which means it's time to talk about the ice dragon theory. Decades before writing A Song of Ice and Fire, George R.R. R. Martin penned plenty of short stories that were set in a world similar to Westeros. He wrote the short story The Ice Dragon 20 years before A Song of Ice and Fire, so while there's no proof that the two are linked, we know that he already had ice dragons flying around his imagination by the time he started the series. He describes the ice dragon itself in the following passage. The ice dragon was large, half again the size of the scaled green war dragons that Hal and his fellows flew. Adara had heard legends of wild dragons larger than mountains, but she had never seen any. Hal's dragon was big enough to be sure, five times the size of a horse, but it was small compared to the ice dragon and ugly besides. The ice dragon was a crystalline white, that shade of white that is so hard and cold that it is almost blue. It was covered with hoarfrost, so when it moved, its skin broke and crackled as the crust on the snow crackles beneath a man's boots and flakes of rime fell off. Its eyes were clear and deep and icy. As you've probably already guessed, the coolest part about ice dragons, aside from being enormous, is that they breathe ice. Martin writes, And when the ice dragon opened its great mouth and exhaled, it was not fire that came streaming out, the burning sulfurous stink of lesser dragons. The ice dragon breathed cold. Ice formed when it breathed. Warmth fled. Fires guttered and went out, shriven by the chill. Trees froze through to their slow secret souls, and their limbs turned brittle and cracked from their own weight. Animals turned blue and whimpered and died, their eyes bulging and their skin covered over with frost. The ice dragon breathed death into the world, death and quiet and cold. While we have yet to meet an ice dragon in the world of Westeros, their name has come up multiple times in the books. When Jon is Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, he thinks about them a few times, always in relation to the wall. The wind was gusting, cold as the breath of the ice dragon and the tales old Nan had told when John was a boy. And the road beneath the wall was as dark and cold as the belly of an ice dragon and as twisty as a serpent. And the wind was blowing from the east along the wall, cold as the breath of the ice dragon and the tales old Nan used to tell. The wall has been around for 8,000 years. Legend has it that giants helped stack the enormous blocks of ice, but even with thousands of giants, it would have been nearly impossible to build such a tall structure. Instead, it seems more likely that the wall was built with some kind of magic. On his deathbed, Maester Aemon insinuates that it was the magical power of the wall that enabled him to grow so old. I should not have left the wall, he says. Lord Snow could not have known, but I should have seen it. Fire consumes, but cold preserves. The wall but it is too late to go running back. The stranger waits outside my door and will not be denied. It had to have been some pretty powerful magic to keep the old Targaryen alive for so long, and dragons are one of the most powerful forms of magic around. So what does all this mean for Game of Thrones? According to the legend of Azor Ahai, or the prince who was promised, some magical powerful savior will rise up to save the world from the White Walkers, just like Azor Ahai did 8,000 years ago. And his is the Song of Ice and Fire. We've also heard that there will be three heads to this dragon savior. From what we've seen so far, Daenerys seems to fit every major part of that prophecy, especially the fire part. Jon Snow is also a good match, what with being half fiery Targaryen and half icy Stark. But that still leaves one third head of the dragon left. If a fully grown ice dragon explodes out of the wreckage of the wall sometime during season seven, it'll tie together the loose ends of the prophecy pretty perfectly. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank <laughs> you.